Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we have the final two games of the season against Liverpool and Everton and of course that will be the end of our season, we'll conclude and we'll have a bit of a discussion on where we go from here. So following on from the last episode, the draw against Arsenal, we went away from home against Leicester City and absolutely smashed them 5-1. Ender Stevens, our backup left wing back, got a hat-trick. Uh, Sebastiano Esposito with one and Jean-Pierre with the other. We then had a home tie against Burnley which we won 3-0. Oliver McBurney, Luca Pellegrini, Alexander Isaac with the goals for us. We then had a crushing defeat against Spurs away from home. Esposito got us a hat-trick to put us in the in front a couple of times during this game. But Adnan Yanazai, Ryan Sessegnon, Davinson Sanchez and Deli Ali got the goals for Spurs to give them the three points. We then went away from home against Wolves and Esposito got himself another goal and gave us the win. We then had a home tie against bottom of the league, Leeds United, and we won this one 3-1. Jean-Pierre with a brace and Alexander Isaac with the goal. And finally, our last game before we start today's episode was a 4-0 away defeat against Manchester City. Bernardo Silva with two, Sergio Aguero and Leroy Sané with the goals for them. And that leaves it all a play for going into the final two games of the season. We currently sit in 7th position on 61 points. Only 2 points behind West Ham in 6th. So potentially we could still get a European spot if we are fortunate really. Because we've got Liverpool first in our first game. They're second fighting for the title. Only 1 point behind Manchester City. So they could go top with a victory against us today. So this is going to be the lineup that plays for today's game. Butland in goal, Kerr, Angin and O'Connell in the defence with Baldock and Luca Pellegrini as our wing-backs. Oliver Norwood and John Fleck in the centre with Jean-Pierre in behind Alexander Isaac and Esposito. They come at us with a 4-2-3-1. I'm not sure how the result went the first time we played Liverpool. I'm sure we got beat. Um, so it's going to take a monumental uh, win here to be able to get us into that sixth place spot. I think a draw would be enough to actually move us into sixth. So it's not... Uh, the fact that we're at home as well, you never know, we weirder things have happened. Highlight straight away, Sadio Mane is in behind, he hits the post for Liverpool 30 seconds in. Not, 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 not a great start, not a great one. Another highlight now, 17 minutes in, Liverpool in possession and Sadio Mane heads it down for Declan Rice who finds Andrew Robertson on this left-hand side, bombing forward for Liverpool, gets to the byline with Baldock on a yellow card so he'll have to be careful manages to get the challenge in before he can get the cross in and Jean-Pierre brings the ball out of the midfield area and drives into the Liverpool box and goes for goal. <sighs> it, was a, it was a wicked strike but he did not get it on target. Another highlight now, Liverpool once again in possession in midfield. Henderson finds Fabinho who drives forward and finds Gomez on the right hand side but Luca Pellegrini gets in and wins the ball back. Continue with the highlight here, Jean-Pierre tries to find Baldock on that right hand side but Liverpool cut it out and Declan Rice brings the ball forward and finds Mo Salah in the box, he's in there, he finds Firmino, absolutely clinical crossing by Liverpool there, great composure by Mohamed Salah to be able to play that ball into the six yard area and Firmino has the easiest finish you could imagine. Decent play by Declan Rice here to split our defence, Mo Salah one touch cross and Firmino is completely unmarked in the centre. His 17th goal of the season, Liverpool 1-0 up. Another highlight now, Lautaro Martinez is set in behind by Jordan Henderson and that was all a little bit too easy. This all came from a Jack Butland clearance, falling to the Liverpool midfield and they caught us asleep in the defensive line and managed to put themselves 2-0 up in front. You can see here, Butland with a kick, goes to nobody. John Flex a little bit too far pushed up. Martinez is in behind straight away and Butland, <laughs> does he make an attempt really? Not really. Another highlight now, a counter by uh, Liverpool, falls to Mo Salah who drives, um, was, was that a shot? Uh, that was a shot, okay. Another highlight now, this time it's us currently in possession, hopefully we can keep it and manage to forge an opportunity for ourselves. Baldock gets past Robertson, he's in the box, he's in the area, he goes for goal and hits the side netting. And there we have it the first half, pretty even in terms of the match stats, but Liverpool have of course dominated us in the chances created and Firmino and Martinez give them a comfortable two goal advantage. Let's kick off the second half. 
even with the t- defeat in uh, the game against Liverpool, it's still not out of our hands. Well, it is out of our hands, but we're only a point behind West Ham with one game remaining. So if they drop any points, if we beat Everton, we should be able to get the sixth place spot. But Everton are a decent side, although the mid-table in the current season, you know, it's not going to be an easy game. As Isaac finds himself in the box, goes for goal, saved by Alisson. Another highlight now, 55 minutes in, and it's a free kick for us on the edge. Norwood takes it on Jane. Somebody scored, it's Kerra. He has managed to get his first goal of the season and brings us back into this game. It all comes from a free kick from Oliver Norwood. He will see it again during the replay. He plays the ball in. What exactly happens? Onjin wins it and the sliding challenge is going in. The ball somehow hits Kerra and manages to go into the back of the net. We've give ourselves a lifeline here. But there is a highlight straight from kickoff and it's Liverpool straight on the attack with Mo Salah finds Jordan Henderson on the edge. Out on the right hand side of Joe Gomez with he just dances past our player and Onjin manages to get his head to it only as far as Andrew Robertson. He's back hailing it with Declan Rice doing nicely to retain possession of the ball. Onjin picks it out though and sets away Jean-Pierre. He's in behind the... Well, he was in behind for a split second there, the Liverpool defence. But he manages to beat his man goal for goal. And Alisson with another save. Esposito's in behind now. <laughs> I mean, this highlight has went on for a very, very long time. And it has ended with us getting the goal. Esposito's 14th goal of the season, as you can see here. Robertson has the ball in the midfield, plays about the screen here, and Onjin just smacks that one over the top of the Liverpool defence, and Esposito with a clinical left-footed finish to bring us back level in this game, 2-2. Another highlight now, and Esposito picks up the ball after a clearance from us. He's in behind the Liverpool defence. Come on, finish our oh, Allison's there, and blocks the shot. Another highlight now, Oliver Norwood receives the ball on this right-hand side. Robertson clears for Liverpool. This second half has been all us and Luca Pellegrini receives the ball on the left-hand side, whips the ball in back post. Baldock gets there, tries to head it back in. Fabinho manages to clear it once again, but we maintain the pressure. Baldock back post again. Fabinho again with the header. Luca Pellegrini to Baldock at the back post. Just over the bar. With only 10 minutes remaining, we'll look to make some changes. Baldock can come off for Freeman. And Ender Stevens can come on for Luca Pellegrini. Refresh our two wing backs. Another highlight now. Oliver Norwood with a corner for us. Plays the ball in. Oh, oh. I mean, Liverpool somehow managed to get that just about clear. We weren't really challenging them in the six-yard area enough to put the pressure on. Ender Stevens gets the ball in the box. Oliver Norwood on the edge to Onjin. Uh, Freeman. I think this is going to fizzle out a little bit. Liverpool are marking us pretty tightly. And there we are. Robertson wins the ball back. And that's the end of that one. Five minutes to go and Liverpool are on the attack. Oh, like, oh, Chamberlain hits the bar. And we managed about just about managed to survive. But Sadio Mane, oh, very, very awkward. This point would be absolutely huge if we managed to hold out for the rest of this game. Sadio Mane, though, receives the ball on the right-hand side and drives down. But Ender Stevens gets back and manages to get the interception in. Interception in, but we give, give the ball away to Robertson, who finds Martinez. And the please, oh, it's not offside either. Martinez, his 32nd goal of the season, gives Liverpool the lead in the 89th minute. And I think that is, that's just going to be that for us for this game. Unfortunately, Andrew Robertson with a lovely crossover. And Martinez just outdoes us at O'Connell. It is. And um, 3-2 Liverpool. Undeserved in the second half. Another highlight now. Bobby Firmino driving forward for Liverpool. Finds Divock Origi cutting in off that left-hand side. Joe Gomez receives the ball on the right-hand side. Norwood intercepts. And please, counter boys, do a good one. Jean-Pierre finds Esposito in behind. He does his man. Come on, Esposito. You can do it. Oh, it goes just wide. And there we have it, full-time Sheffield United 2, Liverpool 3. A great performance by us in the second half to even give us a hope at getting a point out of this game. But it wasn't to be. Martinez was a little bit too good for our defence and we fall to a defeat. So this is the situation going into the final game of the season. We're actually two points behind West Ham um, in the league going into the last game. Who have they got? Hopefully they've got like Manchester City or something. They've got Watford at home. Don't think that's going to be enough to be able to stop them from getting the sixth place spot. But we're just going to have to try and do our best to beat Everton, who are currently sitting in 13th. We are at home again, so that is a little bit of an advantage. But European football might have been a step too far for us this season. 
So we're here at the Everton game, the final game of the season. The Ikomaris with a 4-4-2. No changes to our starting eleven. We came up the same way we did against Liverpool. Let's get into the game. Getting a win here will be absolutely huge just to put the pressure on West Ham. We'll have to try and keep an eye on the later scores as the game progresses. Jean-Pierre goes for goal with a free kick and he gets his 12th goal of the season and puts us 1-0 up one minute in. That is an absolutely delightful free kick. Nothing uh, Jordan Pickford can do about this one. He's about 25 yards out and he does the business 1-0. So West Ham are currently still nil-nil against Watford at home. If things were to stay as they are, I'm pretty sure we are to go sixth. We'll have to get the league table up as well as Richarlison comes down the right-hand side for Everton. Onjean manages to get the challenge in, but he gives the ball away sloppily to Andre Gomes, who can now build a something from the back. No, he can't. We get the challenge in. As you can see here on the league table, we would go sixth if things were to remain as they are. Which would just be absolutely fantastic. As Isaac gets in behind. Goes for goal. Pickford with the save. Come on boys. West Ham have taken the lead. Yarmolenko's put them in front 16 minutes in. That will mean we now drop back down to 7th position. We really need Watford to do us a massive favour here. Another highlight for us now. Jean-Pierre coming forward. Finds Esposito. Lovely little through ball. Alexander Isaac goes past the keeper. And he puts us 2-0 in front. His 5th goal of the season. Absolutely fantastic little bit of interplay there by Jean-Pierre and Esposito to find Isaac with a cut and through ball through the Everton defence. He's Jean-Pierre with the pass, Esposito with the first time pass and Isaac does absolutely brilliantly to go straight past Pickford and find the bat of the net 2-0. So we are doing our part of the bargain. We'll just need Watford to do theirs. Ducori has just got injured, not a great uh, sign for us. And that brings us to the end of the first half. Sheffield United 2, Everton 0. We are sort of cruising in this game. Um, it's all, well, all eyes are on the other game. Watford have equalised 49 minutes in. Keener has got a goal for Watford. And that sees us rise back to 6th in the Premier League. They just need to hold out now for about 30 minutes. And we will be finishing in a European spot. Esposito gets dispossessed with a great challenge by Nelson. Um, in the Everton area. And now they are breaking with Richarlson. Tries to find the runner, but O'Connell manages to cut it out. And we find our runner instead. Jean-Pierre's in behind. What a challenge that is, but it falls back to Pierre. Can he find the man in the six year? Somebody, please. <laughs> the highlight continues. Pellegrini on the left-hand side heads the ball. Goes out for a goal kick, and surely that's the end of that. Moyes Kane brings the ball down after a kick from Pickford. Great challenge. I think that was Kerr to block the shot from Moyes Kane. That could have been a goal quite easily for Everton. But instead, we're on the attack. Luca Pellegrini on this left-hand side. Closed down by two men. He gets challenged, but he manages to get to the byline. And it goes out for a goal kick. <laughs> Another highlight now. O'Connell receives the ball from a Pellegrini throw-in. Plays it at Oliver Norwood in the centre. Jean-Pierre tries to find Baldock, but it gets intercepted. John Fleck, though, finds Pellegrini on the left-hand side. And he has a space. Esposito, what a save that is by John Pickford. Only 20 minutes remaining. And it's still 1-1 in the West Ham-Watford game. On Jean's picked up a knock. We'll look to get him straight off. No point in risking him. And we've got the likes of John Egan on the bench. Who can come in and replace. Highlight continues on. Esposito has been played in behind. Long ball over the top. And Esposito. He has really turned it on in the last 10 games or so. And he gets his 15th goal of the season. On Jean getting an assist just before. He is hauled off for John Egan. And we go 3-0 up in this game. With only 15 minutes remaining. It's just a long Big kick over the top. The defence is left standing. And Esposito does another clinical finish. 1-1 to -one seem to have been um, fixed a little bit. Um, I'm on the latest update as of the 15th of November. So uh, good stuff by us. 10 minutes remain in the match. It's still West Ham 1, Watford 1. We'll, we'll look to make another couple of subs just to save some tired legs, no doubt. We'll get Ender Stevens on and Freeman on. As our wing back replacements, and with only a minute remaining, we have another highlight, and it's still 1 1 and Sheffield United in sixth position. The ball's played long over the top for Moyes Keane for Everton. He keeps the ball in and he drives inside. He manages to beat one, beat two. Is that a penalty? Please don't say it's a penalty. VAR, come on. He was a penalty. It is. Who's this stepping up? It's Gilfie Sigurdsson who's stepping up for Everton to bring them back. Uh, within two goals of us but Jack Butland with a big save and Carrot can get a clear and hopefully we can keep a clean sheet now 
Oh, is it still 1-1 one, one with only a minute remaining? <laughs> just end the highlights. I don't want to see any more highlights. I just want all the games to be over and for us to have won 3 0. Dodo with the ball in. Richardson gets his 11th goal of the season. It's going to be 3 1. I'm going to skip the replays because we don't really care. West Ham won, Watford won. I think that's how things finished in the other game. We will continue just to get this confirmation. Hopefully, Sheffield United finishing sixth position in the league and we claim Europa League football for next season. That's absolutely massive. We'll end the end of the competition at the playoff stage, which is fine by me, but we're going to have a big, big season next season playing in the Europa League for the first time. So an absolutely hectic end to the season. We were a little bit fortunate that Watford managed to be able to pull out the result that guaranteed us sixth position, but we did our bit against Everton and our players performed very admirably. So that's the end of the season. In terms of competitions, finishing sixth in the Premier League is absolutely fantastic. Only 10 points behind Chelsea in fifth. Obviously a big gap there at the start to try and close in the league if we are to progress next season. But I would be happy with a similar level of performance for next season. You know, we've got some pretty big deficiencies in terms of the first team playing squad, particularly in the likes of Centre Midfield. Um, and our strength and depth isn't the greatest either. So we're going to have a lot of work to do during the summer transfer period. We were knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup, which matched our board's expectations. Same as the FA Cup, uh, the League Cup fourth round. Both against Chelsea as well, we got knocked out by. But again, met the expectations, which is the main thing. And the Europa League, we enter the Cup next season. In terms of our club vision, this is how things are looking. We are still on an A-plus manager performance. Very happy with how things are going uh, from the board. They are still very disappointed about us making the most of set pieces. I don't really care, to be honest. I'm constantly going to try and get that removed. Hopefully, someday, they won't be judging me on that no longer. Develop players using the club's youth system they're satisfied along with playing the possession football which is nice to see and signing the players under the age of 23 for the first team they are delighted with so the club culture wise we're doing okay but it's where in our season objectives is where we are absolutely surpassing avoiding relegation we've passed minimum uh, FA Cup fifth round we've passed League Cup fourth round we've passed and we're on course with working within the wage budget they're still reserving judgment and signing players to sell for a profit that's purely because we haven't really sold anybody. So um, actually selling for profit is going to be a little bit of an issue if we're not selling. But that's fine by me. We're still in the squad building phase. We're not really at the phase where we are signing players purely down to increase their value and sell for profit. We'll take a look at some of the end of season stuff. So our best overall 11 is pretty much the 11 that started this season. Um, the only absentee is John Fleck is removed for Jean-Pierre and McBurney comes in in that attack and midfield role. Our end of season awards, Ender Stevens, our backup left wing back wins the fans player of the season followed by McBurney and Jean-Pierre. Oliver Norwood with the goal of the season, we'll take a look at that shortly. Jean-Pierre, the £23 million signing from Brazil is listed as signing of the season and young player of the season goes to Luca Pellegrini. And this is our goal of the season. It's a free kick from Oliver Norwood. I prefer John Pierre's, really. So our season in review, we were 99% full in our stadium capacity. Another couple of seasons like that, and you never know, we may be able to get some, uh, if not extensions, and maybe a new stadium built in a few seasons' time. But we were definitely one of the surprise patches of the season. Our match of the season is listed as the 4-1 away win against Newcastle. Moment to forget was our recent 4-0 uh, away defeat against Man City, but... I'm not really too bothered about that, Man City are a little bit too good. Club vision and expectations meeting. Let's have a look to see if we can get this negotiated. They look like they want to add quite a lot to the club culture, which is annoying to say the least. So four new bits they want us to add. Do not sign players over the age of 30, which I'm completely fine with. Play attack and football, we already do that. Entertaining football, it's a little bit subjective, but I think we do that too. We score a lot of goals and we do play a high tempo pressing football anyway. So these four are more than happy with. I want making the most of set pieces removed, if at all possible. Um, Mid-table finish for next season is sort of lukewarmly um, put into the, into the expectations for next season. I'm fine by that. And be competitive in the Europa League, I'm fine by that as well. And they want us to record a top half finish. Uh, towards the end of the 2023-24 season. I'm fine by that. Hopefully, they let me remove the set pieces. They're not going to let me remove it. Please, 
Right, we're just going to have to confirm. We're still going to be judged. This is so stupid. Why is it even letting us negotiate if it's not even an important bit? The It's just a favoured bit, so it should be able to be removed, particularly with the past couple of seasons we've been feeling at that. But the board still want us in, so it's still in. So we'll have to just deal with it. So board has set the initial budgets for next season, £1 million per week uh, wage budget and a £50 million pound transfer budget which is absolutely fine by me we should be able to make some good improvements to our first 11 based on that and that brings us to the squad for next season how we see things shaking up in terms of goalkeeper jack butland i'm more than happy with he's performed particularly well this season since he's come in in the summer we signed him for 11.75 he conceded 42 goals in 38 games which is not bad for a team at our level in terms of the centre back area our first choice centre backs i'm happy with um, O'Connell being the weakest of the three that start regularly but he's still a decent little player but again it's an area where if somebody pops up that's a, a good bit better than O'Connell we will look to make the moves even if it's just to strengthen um, what we've got in depth because there will be some moves the likes of Chris Basham wants to leave the club um, and I imagine there'll probably be a few other players once they have a look back at the season they might want to move on as well the likes of Tilo Kera has wanted I think he's wanted by uh, Frankfurt. He obviously had a transfer request in place towards the middle of last season. So you never know, he might do it again. We might end up losing some of our first choice players purely down to them wanting to leave. But centre back area, I'm relatively com comfortable with the quality in the first 11. We're right wing back, uh, George Baldock is like an enigma. He's performing well above what you would expect. He got five goals and 12 assists from right wing back. He is a talented player, but again, it is a position where we could improve. He's one of our weakest starting 11 players. So with Kieran Freeman being our backup one, who's not particularly great, I will be looking to strengthen the first choice spot in the right wing back role. Left wing back, I'm completely fine with. We've got Luca Pellegrini, who has progressed lovely over the course of the season. And of course, we've got Ender Stevens backing him up, who ended up winning player of the season, getting 11 goals in 17 games from left wing back, obviously with the 23 substitute appearances central midfielder is where i will be focusing most of my attention oliver norwood and john fleck are our first choices they are both classes three star players in our squad um it makes them good championship players or top championship players should i say but not really at the level required to compete at the top end of the premier league so i'm more than happy for them to stay at the club if they had so desire but I know the likes of John Flex requested moves to bigger clubs already. And Oliver Norwood is the same. He wants to leave if an offer comes in of 19.75 million or higher. So we could see some moves from them too. But I'm definitely looking to improve their uh, first team spot. Jean-Pierre's come in and been an absolute fantastic player. Playing a lot of these games in central midfield due to injuries. But attacking midfield is his main area. And I see no reason why we would need to improve on him just yet and um, he's in incredibly well-rounded looks like he's maxed out his potential so far at Sheffield United but even at that level he is more than good enough to be as part of our first 11 and now two strikers Alexander Isaac and Esposito we should feel relatively comfortable look at how Esposito has improved he has become an absolute machine 15 goals in 38 games you look at that when it was about 20 games he only had about four goals so he's done incredibly well in this the second half of this season uh, improve that goal scoring record and he's going from strength to strength he's classed as a four and a half star player now um still got the five star potential only 18 years old i think the 20 million we ended up paying for him will look like a bit of a bargain alexander isaacs came in scored five goals in 16 games in the premier league not as good as um esposito but he's still done incredibly well he's improved nicely as well some of his physicals have improved although it looks like he's going downhill um his attributes have increased a three and a half star current five star potential player i wouldn't mind maybe bringing in one more striker we're going to have to actually because the likes of billy sharp is leaving the club at the end of the season so we will look to look maybe move on the likes of lise Mousset, callum robinson and bring in somebody to really compete with esposito and isaac to be able to bring the best out of them and finally, we'll look at the transfer activity club vision page, which if you remember, the likes of Esposito had a D when we signed him, or a D minus. He's been moved up to a C plus. They still think he's a little bit overvalued for what we paid. I completely couldn't disagree more. 
they're pretty happy with the Alexander Isaac sign on both the board and the fan reactions good. Same with Luca Pellegrini. C minus from the board's not great, but B from the fans is great. The fans definitely seem a little bit more forgiving, both ins and outs. Um, they really, really did like the Jack Butland signing, which got an A minus. Well, that's all good stuff. Really good stuff. So looking forward to the next season, I'm hoping to compete at the top or top end of the Premier League, you know, try and qualify for the Europa League spots again. Um, but at the very least, top or finish is where I'm imagining. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.